Closed captioning for The Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the taste, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on The Casey Malone Show. It's an oldie but a goodie. Making witch fingers with Cruella. Next, a tour of the frightening experience. But first, local history close by in Canfield. Well, again, this is one of those things I drive by five, six times a week and I never stop to visit. And it is Loghurst, right here on Route 224 in Canfield, part of the Canfield Heritage Foundation. And the site manager is Janelle Donahue. And Janelle, you, off camera, this really is an interesting dwelling with a really rich history. I love it. It goes back to 1805 when Conrad Neff built it out of the log hewn, 12 inch log hewn logs of chestnut. This was added on after 1826. It's the new kitchen. Yeah, it's the new, new kitchen. kitchen. I mean, but this <laughs> when was, they remodeled. This was inhabited until the 80s. Yes. The 1980s. Yes. Josephine lived here. Really interesting. It was built in 1805 and Josephine donated around eight, 1976 to 1980, sometime in that time frame. She donated it to the Western Reserve Historical Society. Well, I, and you were doing a wonderful job maintaining this. I and do, is there a place. lot of interest when you have the tours? Do, do you see they a lot love of it? Come? Yes, we do Girl Scout troops. They come in because they have to earn a histor- historical badge. Uh-huh. So that we'll do that and candle dipping for them. And when people come, they they love it. It's just people I mean, who this drive is really by it. Part of our heritage, our history here in the valley, mm-hmm. and you drive by it a million times a day. Yeah, this he, is a busy road. Yes. It was the main road from Pittsburgh going to Akron and up to Cleveland, and it was nothing more than a dirt path through the woods when he first built this house here. So where did all these acquisitions come from? Uh, are these all? From the household, or are these just no. true to the period? Most of it's true to the period. It's Right now, the setting is around 1900 when the last family, the Kyles, had it. This is Jacob Barnes's rifle. His family donated it to wow, us. That is nice. Uh, this is the ice box from the period. Can I touch yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Look, and then you put the little ice. The ice would there. go in the bottom. Yeah. And these are the ice tongs where they would pull it out. Now this room is a, a lot more cozy. I guess it would be well, this wall-to-wall or, carpet. Originally, <laughs> yeah, because the setting that in these rooms are now from the uh, Kyles. Okay. From 1900s. This was uh, originally, this was Conrad Neff's family's uh, kitchen. And it was Jacob Barnes that put the paneling up and stained it with ox blood. Oh. He enlarged the windows and put glass in them because up until that point it was oil cloth on the windows. And now would the Barneses have been considered wealthy they for were, that time? They were wealthy at that time. They were. He was originally from Connecticut. He moved to Surrey, Virginia where he met and married his wife and th- he had accumulated money. And what so was his He was business? a farmer. A farmer. He was okay. a farmer and so when they he came to Canfield there's a little cutie pie thing where Canfield really didn't want him because he had eight children in tow and they thought they would become wards of the city or something. So when he bought <laughs> Loghurst, he paid with gold coin, proving he could support his large family. This is Conrad Neff's original sign that he's it hung out, f- out front of the home. And you could see C-N-A-F-F. And then years later when Jacob bought it, Jacob Barnes bought it. He reused the sign and put J A B A R N S. I'll just open the door to give you a shot. This is how they got upstairs, and it swings around the fireplace. That looks a little steep. It is very steep. This is set up in the 1900s from Josephine's days here. Josephine was actually born in 1905 in the house, and her sister was born in 1908 in this house. This is how it would have looked in the 1900s. The carpeting in this room and that room is original to the Kyle family, along with Josephine's pump organ. You really are the historian for Trumbull County, which Uh, used to be all of... All of Northeastern Ohio. (laughs) And of course, uh, we did a lot of research and preparation 
into uh, land deeds and titles in order to identify who these different families are, you know, what was their connection to Canfield. So you really can gain a lot of knowledge right. from just reading the tombstones, huh? And then to go to a library and research an obituary. Now, after the Civil War, obituaries became a little more lengthy mm -hmm. and gave history. The early ones just said, born such and such a date and then a place and died. Yes, and, and, and you that get was more just, information on so the you, family. The later ones give you much more uh, information. So where should we begin our tour? Well, I think we should point out uh, Martin and Catherine Neff, who were both buried in the mausoleum. Yep. And the mausoleum was uh, discontinued for use. Uh, descendants of the families were encouraged to remove the remains and bury them in the uh, regular family plots in the cemetery. Now, Catherine Neff was the first uh, burial coffin to be, to be placed in that. She didn't get her remains put in there until two years after she died. When did they choose to close the mausoleum? Uh, in the early 40s. And now that's for the storage 40s. purposes? Well, it was sealed off because, of course, there were some descendants of burials in that mausoleum that uh, they couldn't find any relatives. Bruce Knapp is also a member of the Historical Foundation and how you have so many family members here. Right, right. well I never knew that growing up but now that I'm uh, approaching the age where I'm going to be horizontal in this. Are you uh, going to be with your people? I'm going to be with my people. It is, it's right over here. So. so this is the newer section. Yeah, that's the newer section. But this is my grandmother and grandfather, Roy and Laura Neff, and my uh, and their oldest son, Charles, and his wife, Evelyn Neff. And then that would have been your aunt and uncle. Uh, aunt and uncle, yep. Now Jacob was reportedly buried in the farm cemetery in a vertical position standing up. And the myth was that he wanted to be ready to escape in case the devil came or the uh, Underground Railroad uh, slave catchers, that he could make a fast exit from where, where he was being uh, followed. Well, I got to tell you, the members of this foundation, you really know your stuff with the Canfield history. And it, it's really living history. You do the cemetery walks. There's all kinds of activities up at Loghurst. And I, I really appreciate your time. Well, you thank know, you so much for coming out sharing. and letting us talk to you. Well, I feel so badly that I live right nearby and I don't know anything about the history that's all around me. Uh huh. Well, and come again. You are a wealth of knowledge. Oh. And uh, make sure you go to their website or give them a call to find out more activities for the Heritage Foundation. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. I'm here at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery with owner Phil Rita. And you know, his craft beer selection here at the Magic Tree is the largest in the region. And now, what are you doing with wine? We are so excited to bring the area's very first wine draft system right here to the Magic Tree in Boardman, Ohio. And it is like drinking wine from the winery. We received the barrel directly from the winery and it is fresh and delicious to the very last drop. Come to the Magic Tree's Wine and Spirit Room and you see for yourself. Cheers. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's, and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients, and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rolly Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor.
right now at Kamara Jewelers. It's our October bridal closeout. Save 50% off select designer engagement rings and remounts. Simon G, DeMarco, Camelot, Gabriel, Art Carve Bridal, and many more. Get, Get real. real. Get Kamara. Coming this fall, an all-new haunted attraction, Fear Awaits. In a baseball stadium after dark, the experience in Eastwood Field. Hurry into a Spitzer location near you to enjoy the lowest prices of the year on some of our best-selling 2016 models. You can save thousands on your new vehicle with the Spitzer Model Year on Sales event. Spitzer, saving you more since 1904. Well, one of my favorite haunted houses in the area has always been Ghoul Mansion in Skedden, Pennsylvania. And now they're here at Eastwood Field with experience. Three haunts, clown chaos, black light golf, and you know, I am not the authority I once was, so I had to bring in the big guns, my nieces. I have got Megan, Mary Ann, and Maeve with me. And you guys have a lot of experience with haunted things, don't you? Yeah, yes we do. What do you find really scary, Maeve? Um, I find chainsaw dudes. <laughs> chainsaw dudes are pretty scary, especially when the chainsaw is alive, you know? Yeah. What about you? What do you find really scary when you go to haunted houses? Probably slaughterhouses. Those scare me a lot. And. You being, you know, the oldest sister, you've got the most experience, Megan. What really scares you? Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we've got to do the clown chaos golfing. Now, you know, my go-to guy for anything frightening is Jim. He brought us Ghoul Mansion and now the experience. the experience. What do we expect? That is, I mean, you have so much more space to work with at Eastwood Field. Oh, absolutely. Um, what you can expect is everything that I couldn't do in Sharon. That's, <laughs> a, that, that, that's, that's the easy explanation. Um, you know, we've got three haunted houses. We've got Clown Chaos Mini Golf. We've got the Scarecade. We've got our whole, uh, our midway here. We'll have different entertainment on, on different nights. We'll have some fire breathers here. And, and uh, you know, pretty much everything that we couldn't do before, we're now doing. Now, the, you have three different haunts. Serious haunts. Is there like a degree of fright? Like, would one be the most and the one the le you know lesser? No, you know, uh, one of the things that we did here is we wanted to make it a you know a, a family event, but still stand by our laurels as, as making it scary as well. So, um, you know, I, I refuse to get rid of all the scare. Um, but one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to make it fun for the entire family, so the girls can come out and have a good time. And and you know, I, I say from the youngest to the oldest and the smallest to the tallest uh, can all can all come out and have a good time. We've got um, so three haunted houses. We have um, the haunted, uh, we have isolation, and then we have Thorn Funeral Parlor. And uh, they all have different themes, but um, so the Hunted basically is a zombie-themed mansion. Um, Ooh, and uh, the Isolation, um, for those of you who maybe came to Sharon in the past, um, when you, and maybe tried or didn't try the Hunted, or the Hooded Haunt. Oh um, boy, how oh, that Hooded Haunt oh, yeah, freaked me out. You, you didn't like that, so <laughs> so we did away with the hoods for you, Casey. Oh, but okay. but, um, but I'll promise you that after you go through Isolation, you'll wish that you had a hood on instead. <laughs> Uh, and then our third haunt is Thorn Funeral Parlor, and that's based off of a, of a script that um, R.J. Hattie has helped us with. So R.J., as you know, was, uh, was on the television show Face Off on Sci-Fi, and he's now our full-time makeup artist. So he has created some custom characters for us oh. and uh, has helped us create this custom-themed haunt. And um, uh, so we've got all that. We then have the Scarecade, which is a place where if you're too scared to go through, you can actually come in, you can um, uh, activate an old school arcade game. You and I remember that. The girls you know, think about an arcade game sitting in front of a television, but uh, the arcade games that we remember, you can stand there, you can activate a camera inside the haunt, and you'll be able to scare people inside the haunted house. The other thing that we have going on uh, is uh, an app that we've partnered with a company called Dare to Scare. And uh, Dare to Scare app, you can download it on your smartphone, either iPhone or Android. 
and you'll actually be able to activate um, cameras within the haunted houses, and you'll be able to activate scares in the haunted houses, so you can actually sit at home on your couch and scare people in the haunted house here. Now we've got to give it the official review. What do we say for experience? I like it. I say thumbs yeah. up. Yeah. Two thumbs up. Two, I can't. two thumbs up. Yeah, two thumbs up. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi everybody, I'm Danny, owner and operator of Cthulhu Prime Meats, the third generation butcher shop that not only specializes in quality, but also in customer service and doing things in a new technological way. Chris here is our customer service manager. Chris, what do you think that we do differently than any other grocery store? I think we personally not only offer great product, but we can offer a great customer service experience as well. We try and treat all our customers like they were family and friends, ask how their family's doing just so they can keep in touch, and give them that customer experience that they deserve. And the nice part is we not only do that inside the store, but also on CthulhuPrimates.com, where you can buy a lot of our products that we carry here, whether it be grass-fed beef, organic chicken, some of our specialty burgers and bacon, those are wonderful, and we're going to provide that same customer experience online as we do in-store. Come see us in-store or online. Make your next meal one to remember. Cerny means trucks. For over 50 years, the Cerny family has been the area's leader for medium and heavy-duty international trucks. New or pre-owned, Cerny means trucks. Easy to find. Cerny Motors is conveniently located at Route 46 and 80. At Cerny Motors, no job is too big or too small. Cerny Motors service will keep you on the road. For service, parts, sales, lease, or rental, Cerny means trucks. Save 25% off loose diamonds right now at Kamar Jewelers. Our bridal closeout is underway. Save 25% on all diamonds. We'll custom design your perfect ring. Trust your family jeweler for 68 years. Get real, get Kamara. Pursue your passion for craft beer at Mortal's Key Brewing Company in Jamestown. We've unlocked old world recipes with the finest ingredients, small batch care, and an artistic nonconformity. Enjoy craft brews by award-winning brewmaster, Sean McIntyre. Open all year. Visit our tap room across from Pymatuning Lake. Find some freedom. Mortal's Key Brewing Company. There's a new standard in assisted living. One that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services. And a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. Hurry into a Spitzer location near you to enjoy the lowest prices of the year on some of our best-selling 2016 models. You can save thousands on your new vehicle with the Spitzer Model Year on Sales event. Spitzer, saving you more since 1904. Brunhilde here with my lovely niece Cruella and today we're going to prepare for you a family favorite our severed witch's finger cookies. Yes we love to serve them to our guests for a Halloween party. That's right let's get started Cruella. <laughs> For this recipe, you'll need 30 blanched almonds, two large eggs, one quarter teaspoon vanilla extract, one half cup butter at room temperature, one half cup of powdered sugar, five tablespoons of granulated sugar, one pinch of salt, one and two third cup of all purpose flour, and two tablespoons of food coloring, your choice. And don't forget the Ion Newt. 
<laughs> Before we get the batter started for our cookies, we've preheated the oven to 350. And we'll get our fingernails painted. These blanched almonds will serve as the fingernails. Now, who else? What color would we like our fingernails to do? Black and green. I love that color. Black fingernails and green. So we'll let these soak in the food coloring while we get everything together. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll crack the egg and we're going to just remove the yolk and we'll leave all the egg whites in the bowl for later use. So now we'll put the egg yolk over here. We'll crack the other egg. Add the vanilla. And whisk this up, because we'll be adding this to the batter in a little bit. <laughs> All right, in our cauldron, Cruella, let's first add the butter. Very good. Now let's put in the powdered sugar. In here. Yes, drop that right in there. Oh, you do that so well. Thank now you. let's add the granulated yeah. sugar. Beautiful. And now let's add a pinch of salt. <laughs> Beautiful, Cruella. All right, now we'll combine these on medium speed for just a few moments until they're well combined. <laughs> oh, this looks fine. Now, We'll add the egg mixture with the vanilla and beat it again over medium for two minutes longer. Oh, and this is coming along beautifully, Cruella. It's thoroughly combined. And now it's time to add our flour. Would you be of service and help me with that? While the mixer's running, a little bit at a time, keep adding the flour. Would you do that for me, Cruella? Yes, I would, Brewhound. Right. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Is this good? That is beautiful. Start adding the flour. Oh, wonderful. Keep adding it until that bowl is empty. All right, Cruella, look at this beautiful cookie dough. Let's remove it from the bowl and then put it in the refrigerator for a half hour or so to get it nice and chilled so it will be easier for us to work with. <laughs> may I help you wrap it? Oh, yes you may, my love. Please, put that over the top. And we'll seal it perfectly. Keep it nice and airtight. <laughs> now we'll pop this in the fridge for a half hour. All right, before we roll the fingers out, let's get our fingernails out of the dye. And we'll let them dry a bit before we add them to the cookie. Oh, Cruella, that is a beautiful black color. Look at the beautiful green. We'll roll it now on a floured surface. We want them to be fairly thin, about three to four inches long. Like this one, right? Yes, just like our fingers. <laughs> May I roll some on the, sure. on the plate? Go right ahead. Now while you add the fingernails to each cookie, I'm going to take a knife and just score some wrinkles in so it looks just like a knuckle. I love the colors of those fingernails. The green and the black are absolutely terrifying. Cruella, 
Please brush these with the egg white before we put them into the oven. Oh, very nice job. And now, Cruella, into the oven for 12 minutes until golden brown. <laughs> So, Cruella, let's try our fingers. They look wonderful. Mmm, magnificent. What should we drink with our wonderful witch's fingers? Ghost blood. Why, ghost blood is a splendid idea. Cheers, my love. For the complete recipe, go to kcmaloneshow.com. <laughs> My show is always on. Watch previous segments at kcmaloneshow.com. Sponsored by the Ingram Law Office. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.